Hypothetical situation. You have a friend who is pregnant. She and her husband are in a good financial position, are young and healthy, and most of all, are ready to have a child. They're a bit worried about how their lives are about to change as parents, but they're also very excited. Unfortunately, this is not a happy hypothetical situation. You see, about nine weeks into the pregnancy, your friend and her husband are in a serious car accident and they lose the baby. How would you describe this situation? How would you approach your friend? Remember that for a moment as I present a second hypothetical situation. You have a friend who is pregnant, only she is not in a good financial situation and her boyfriend has left her with no intention of helping her raise a child. Your friend is worried about some underlying health condition she has, and she cannot even imagine raising a child in this stage of her life. It was a mistake to get pregnant. And so your friend, feeling utterly weighed down by life, unable to deal with the mistakes she made, and worried that she would do tremendous harm to a child and to herself if she were to bring life into the world, decides to terminate the pregnancy at nine weeks. How would you describe this situation? How would you approach your friend? For many people, the answer is the same. It's a tragic situation. Regardless of how it happened, a life has been lost. What could have been is no longer there, and either implicitly or explicitly, pain is felt by everyone involved. But others don't see it that way. For many, these are completely different situations. In one case, someone lost a child. In another, someone was gravely inconvenienced, put through a difficult ordeal, but only collateral damage was lost. A fertilized egg, an embryo, that's it. Although both situations are undesirable, they are, for many people, clearly, clearly different. And that, to me, is fascinating, disheartening, and ultimately the flaw in the argument in favor of abortion. There is no objective, concrete sense of when life begins. Now, admittedly, my analogy may not be perfect, so try not to get hung up on the details on the scenario. I tried my best to create a hypothetical situation to get your attention and lay out my point, but it may not have worked. So let me explain as clearly as I can. For those who support abortion as a woman's right to choose, a pregnancy has no inherent value in itself. If the mother wants to have a child, if it's planned, if it's her choice, then it's a wonderful thing. She and her partner have been given the gift of life, and I suspect that even those who support a woman's right to choose would say that the pregnant woman has a baby inside her. She is privileged and must be taken care of. To lose the pregnancy for any reason would be utterly tragic. And yet, if that same woman, with that same fetus inside her, did not want to be pregnant, if she chose to exercise her right not to see the pregnancy through to term, Supporters of her choice would not see the disposal of a fetus as tragic in the same way. Maybe it's still sad, sure, but it's justifiable, a necessary evil, more than tolerable. My question, and really I think the ultimate question, is how is it a baby in the first scenario and just a disposable choice in the second? What about the actual being inside the woman has changed? The answer, plain and simple, is that one is wanted and the other isn't. The life and viability of a pregnancy is defined by many, not by some ontological, biological, or spiritual nature within the being itself, objective qualities, but rather by how desirable it is to others, a subjective quality. This is a problem. Years ago, the argument was that abortion was allowed up until a certain point, because up until a certain point, it was not reasonable to expect the child to survive on its own. It was too underdeveloped, too dependent on its mother, and so couldn't be considered an independent, fully formed human being deserving of rights and protections. And hey, I don't agree with this, but at least it's something. At least it's a debatable point, something that biological and philosophical inquiry could look into. There is an objective quality, a standard to work with. Today, however, this is hardly the case. Increasingly, the argument in support of abortion has nothing to do with the actual child itself. It makes no claim one way or another of its nature of life. It is purely about the right of the mother to choose. If she chooses to take it to term, then it was always a living child. If she chooses to end the pregnancy, even up until 22, 24 weeks, even up to the point where the being inside her could most definitely survive, then it's a choice of what to do with her body. 
absolutely no consideration is made of the being itself. People have decided to completely ignore the question of when does life begin for the sake of the absolute right of the mother, which quite obviously presents itself with a major, major problem. Take the case of the Ohio couple that was arrested back in February. A woman gave birth to a child in her home, but because she didn't want the child, she didn't feed it, give it any medical attention, or call 911. She just let the little boy die a few hours after birth. An absolute monster, right? She should be tried for murdering a human being. Now let's look at the full story. Before giving birth, the pregnant woman took abortion pills that were meant to end the life of the baby and induce labor. Obviously, the pills only did half of their job, but in many states, she was completely within her right to abort the child in her womb. For those who support late-term abortions, had the pills worked, she would be guilty of nothing. But tell me, how is giving birth to the child and letting it die any different than killing it inside the womb and inducing labor? If the child could have been born, could have survived outside of the womb had he gotten medical attention, how was he any less human inside the womb hours earlier when she took the pills? If you were outraged when you heard that she just let the baby die, why would you not be outraged that she took those pills in the first place? At the heart of this issue is but a simple question. At what point does life begin? At what point do we start caring about the rights and liberties of the child and not just the right of the mother to choose? I suspect that we all agree that you do not have a right to kill a newborn baby, and so I wonder when the right to choose ceases. Sadly, and to our great detriment, it's a question that supporters of abortion no longer care to answer. Life is merely a subjective quality, dependent on feelings and usefulness, and subservient to a woman's absolute right to choose. As Catholics, as those who recognize the inherent dignity of all life, who seek to protect the vulnerable inside and outside of the womb, it is so important that we reject this flawed logic wherever we find it. Life cannot be a subjective quality. When we have discussions on this topic, we must remind people that a fetus is alive. It is organic material that exists for reasons that we do not understand. But of course, it is more than just a living being. It is a living human being. Its genetic makeup is not that of a turtle or flower or bacteria. It is a living being of our very species. But even more than that, it is a unique living human being, distinct from its mother, unlike any other human being that has ever existed. For much of the gestation period, it would not survive on its own, sure, and we can absolutely debate how that affects our answer. But the fact of the matter is that it is not just a part of the mother. It is not her body, not her flesh. At five weeks, it has its own heartbeat, distinct from the mother's. This being, this living being, this living human being is its own unique self. When does life begin? When does personhood begin? When does something become a self and deserve to be cared about? The ultimate problem with the abortion argument today is not that we define this question differently, that some people don't even care to answer it. When you meet someone who supports abortion, when you get into discussions like these, ask them this question. Force them to talk about this issue, to work out the logic and take it to its logical end. The only way that we can make sense of a right to choose is when we ignore the fact that what we're choosing between is life and death. Don't let people forget this.